Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. We are here at Oculus Unwrapped. I am joined by... Jason Rubin, VP of Content for Oculus. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are showcasing here at Oculus Unwrapped. There are a lot of video games that you guys are showcasing. What is it all about? Yeah, we have a lot of video games here. We also have a lot of experiences. Um, it's been the year of content for us. We started the year at GDC in March saying this was going to be the year that the library really blossoms out. And sure enough, here we are at the end of the year. We have over 300 titles available for uh, Rift Touch alone, over 2,000 titles in our entire platform. Uh, we have Oculus Go coming at the beginning of next year, 199 standalone headsets, got everything in it you need. Um, it's kind of like a Gear VR, but all in one, don't need to put your phone in it. And then the Santa Cruz prototype, which we showed at OC4 in October, uh, is coming out sometime in the future, and that's kind of like a mashup between the Rift and the, you know, the Oculus uh, Go. If they had babies, that would be uh, the Santa Cruz prototype, and we'll be talking more about that next year. Um, also really excited that the price of a Rift has come down since a year ago. Had we been sitting in this seat a year ago, we would be talking about a $799, £799 Rift. They're now $399, and in fact, this last weekend for Black Friday, they were £349, $349. As the content library has gone up, the price has come down, which means it keeps becoming a better and better time to get into VR. Fantastic. And sort of the, the headset that has done very well for gaming is sort of the PlayStation VR. They have done incredibly well on Amazon and they've got a lot of games out there. What are you guys doing to sort of bring in more consumers to get your headsets? Yeah, well, look, PlayStation 4, there are a lot of users out there. It's a great piece of hardware. PSVR is also a great piece of hardware. We started with eh, a higher price point and probably less people that had the graphics cards that were required than PlayStation did. But now we're getting to the point, PC prices drop very quickly, much faster than console prices. PC expands very quickly. Our price has come down. We're now very competitive with PSVR. And I would argue we always had, if not now, we definitely have the best content library in the business. So I think what you're gonna see over the next couple of years is PC VR really take off and Rift be the center place uh, or centerpiece a PC VR. So I'm looking forward to the future. I'm also really excited that Sony's out there putting money and time and energy into making games. That's good for VR. It's good for VR, it's good for Oculus. This is gonna be a very, very, very long expansion into mass market. And so everybody that's pulling is pulling in the same direction. Do you find that introducing virtual reality to other companies who, for example, have no idea about it, but they kind of just wanna jump on the VR bandwagon that you, you, you have to explain the whole new language. Like it's a completely new Bible. It's a new way of, of telling stories. You find that quite, quite difficult to explain to clients? Yeah, it, it, whenever a new company jumps into VR, they expect, uh, and we've worked with some of the best developers in the business, and some of the best creators in the business, I'm good, I just get this. I'm gonna jump in, it's gonna be great. It actually doesn't turn out that way. I've been saying for a long time, AAA developers become A developers. A developers become B developers. They have to relearn the language that they're working in. It's like moving to another country. You may be great at what you do, but if you can't speak to the people you're dealing with, you take a step back, right? You still may be the best football player on the planet, but if you're dealing with teammates that speak a different language, it, it does become harder to, you know, to do things. So it's not like you start completely from, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but you do take a giant step back and then you have to relearn. Interestingly, you would think that that would prevent developers and creatives from wanting to get into VR, but the opposite is true. Many of us have been in this business for decades and we know the language we're working in. So the joy of stepping back and learning things from scratch is actually fresh and exciting. And we, if you do an interview with a developer, like I've heard Ready at Dawn say this many times and Insomniac say this many of times, if you talk to that developer, they're wildly excited about VR because not only do they see the incredible potential, but they're learning things new every day and experimenting again and, and everything is fresh. They love it. So VR is, is, is definitely, um, it's a learning experience for everybody that gets into it. But the result is so powerful that people are willing to go through it. It's not just version eight of some IP, it's something that you've never done before. And if you go on forums, you go on Reddit, and you read people's reactions, they literally say things like, oh my God, I've, I haven't felt this way since the first time I, whatever, 10, 15 years ago that they first got into gaming. 
But everything's going so fast with regards to hardware, technology. So I mean, it must be so difficult as developers and also trying to figure out, you know, oh, this is great for this headset. Oh my God, the Oculus Go is coming out. We need to maybe rethink of, you know, what to do for all the future headsets that are coming out, the mixed reality headsets. <laughs> trying to do with the content at the right time at the right sort of wave. Um, how, how do you see the future of, I guess, content coming out to all of your future headsets? Yeah, this is one of the big challenges of VR right now. The hardware team and our research team have so many amazing ideas for where the hardware can go. But if we keep releasing a new hardware that has an entirely new interface every year, developers can't catch up with it. So for a while now, there's going to be this balance between launching new hardware and moving forward and catching, and, up. And catching up as developers. Um, what I would say is people who use the Rift are incredibly enamored with the Rift. We have a hardware set there that is fundamentally workable and loved. And developers love developing for it. So the Rift is going to be here for a while. We are not replacing the Rift next year with something brand new that's going to suddenly blow everything that we've done out of the water. Rift is going to be our focus for a while. And likewise, in mobile, even though we're launching Oculus Go, all of the content is compatible with Gear VR. So every developer that's worked for Gear VR, their content just comes over onto Go, and as they move forward, Go will continue kind of being part of that same mobile ecosystem. Of course, at some point in the future, there will be another generation, just like there is in consoles, phones, and everything else. But we will make sure that consumers who buy Rifts and consumers who buy our mobile platform have a long life for the content they're working on. And backwards compatibility may be a big part of what we do in the future, just because things are happening so fast. I mean, look, the average development time for a console game is two to three years. So if we're releasing new hardware every year or two, there's no way you can catch up. You simply can't catch up. You don't know what you're developing for. Um, so we'll make sure that both developers and, uh, developers and creatives have the right platform for their products when it comes out. So with the Santa Cruz headset, or whatever it's going to be called in the future, I tried it out. I mean, I was rolling on the floor. I was testing out to see if everything was tracking, and it was, it was doing incredibly well. Do you think that maybe it was almost a little bit too late like for the headset to be coming out? Should it be coming out sooner somehow? When is it coming out? We're so impatient. I said this at OC4 in my, in my part of the keynote. We are so impatient as consumers. Um, the technology behind that headset couldn't come out earlier. We are hitting it as quickly as we can and doing everything we can. I would also add that we are training uh, the, the recognition software to know where it is in the room. So if you had a good experience from a tracking standpoint, we're still training it. It's still getting better every day. It's learning things about reflections and light and, and what this is and what that is and how to judge distances. It's actually getting better. So we will release it in its right time. We would love for technology to move quicker. We are bringing it out at the right time and we're doing the right thing with it. And if you rush too quickly, you bring people technology with no content to underlie it. So one of the reasons that we've waited so long to bring the price down on the Rift is because we wanted to make sure the library is there. And with the right number of, of, of content now, over 300 titles for Rift, it's the right time. So yes, the technology would have been great yesterday, 20 years ago, and 40 years ago. But we're doing it as quickly as we can, but bringing out a product that the consumer will find is fulfilling, has a content library they're interested in, works up to their expectations, et cetera, et cetera. Are you also building experiences for that headset specifically from the ground up? So not specifically something that's brought over for, from the Rift to the headset, but something made from the ground up for the Santa Cruz headset? Yeah, well, we're not talking about the launch of the headset, so I shouldn't you know, be talking about the content we're making for it. What I will say is, you can't fit a PC in a headset today. I think this is obvious to anyone sitting at home that has a graphics card that's like a 970. That fan plugging into the wall, the amount of power, the heat dissipation. Imagine strapping a 970 and a car battery to your head. It's just not going to work. So it is not going to be a rift when it launches. We're not at that point yet. Uh, likewise, it is not a Gear VR because it has positional tracking and rift-like controllers. You've used it. There is no software that's been built on Gear VR with controllers. There is no software for Rift that's been built for a processor that can fit in a headset. So by the nature of the technology, it will require software to be made for it directly. 
Um, that's about as far as I can go in, in discussing the content. And again, when it launches, we will make sure there's enough content for people. Right. I mean, so with all of these, you know, hardware technologies and advancements coming out, do you find that I've, I've seen a lot of developers and big companies actually say that they're going to go into virtual reality and it's almost been like they've invested too soon, you know, and then you see them crash and then they stop working in virtual reality. And it's very sad to see. Uh, with, with this, what, what is your advice to sort of content creators and developers like, when is the right time for, for you guys to invest in creating great content? Is it right now? Is it great to sort of in, you know, wait for the curvature to come up? What is, what is the best way to create the best environment for content for virtual reality? Now is a great time to get started learning about VR. And by that, I don't mean that you can't make money in VR, because there are companies that are making money in VR. But we're still in the infancy of VR, and it's still growing. Um, I remember the beginning of the mobile marketplace, and there were companies that jumped into mobile very early that didn't make money and fell apart. I also remember the first companies jumping into 3D gaming and CD-ROM-based gaming, and companies couldn't make it there and fell apart. The game business, the content creation business, both of them, are tough businesses. There are always going to be companies uh, that don't do well um, and companies that fail. Likewise, there are companies that succeed. It's very important to think about the business you're in and think in the long term. Naughty Dog, the company that I formed that went on to create Crash Bandicoot, uh, we were very aware of the challenges with moving into the PlayStation, which was one of the first 3D gaming systems, and we took a careful approach to doing so. At the time, console-based uh, hardware was very dominant, and you had billion-dollar franchises and companies that were making a lot of money uh, making those titles. But we believed, as a small developer at the time, that the right thing to do is to invest in the future and get ahead of those big companies who are focusing on what we would consider legacy hardware because that's where the money was at the time. As a result of that, Naughty Dog learned more about 3D gaming than most other companies knew at the time. We established ourselves as a cutting edge company, created an IP that had lasting value, and ended up creating an extremely valuable business that we ended up selling to Sony that's still an incredibly valuable business. The same thing happened in the mobile community when mobile came out. People got too quick, didn't think about the dollars, only thought about the content, uh, and failed. At the same time, Zynga, Playdom, Playfish, uh, companies like that, and eventually King, made a huge amount of money and created established franchises and very important IP and lasting businesses because they got in early when everybody else was saying, it's a small screen, it doesn't have a, ga you know, it doesn't have a good controller, nobody's going to want to play games on that, nobody's going to want to be involved in that. So there's a careful balance that you have to make between getting ahead and giving yourself the chance to create a dominant position for yourself, which is incredibly lucrative and lasting, and getting too far ahead and failing to do that. It's a rough and tumble business. It always has been. Uh, I feel for every developer that goes out of business. This is the game we're in. <laughs> and on that note, uh, is there a website where we can find out about what you guys are doing and sort of your future endeavors as well? Oculus.com is definitely the best place to go to find out about Oculus. I mean, we have blogs that come out quite often. If you're interested in what we're working on or just want to learn more about the business, uh, you know, go to Oculus.com and, and read the blogs. I'm often surprised at what we put in the blogs. Sometimes I think it's a little too much, too much information, but you know, it, the development community that is working in VR right now is a community. Over time, it will become a competitive space. But right now, I've been pleasantly surprised at how cooperative the development community has been in sharing what they know. If you go to Oculus Connect, it's all out there. People are giving you all the information they have. Um, that won't last. There will be a time where it becomes much more of a business and people are holding close to their chest their secret sauce. But right now it is a frontier. People are helping each other. I've seen developers amazingly give their code to other developers and say, oh, your throw's terrible. Here's our throw, which you will not see in five to 10 years. But you know, throwing in VR, it's a complicated thing to get right. And some developers are being very forward and sharing that. Um, so our blogs are a great place to go. Our forums, our developer forums are a great place to go. You don't have to be a developer to get in there. You can sign up and just go read about it. Um, those are the places I would go.
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for all of your advice. Of I'm sure that lots of you know developers will be very interested in finding out what you guys are up to. Of uh, and head over to VRFocus.com if you want to find out more about what's happening in virtual reality. Yeah, and if you're a developer, you can always go to our developer forums. We're more than happy to hear from people, and we, we have one-on-one -on -one communication back and forth. Uh, we're trying to foster a community.